Uh, sorry, um, you gotta, I, I must apologize. I just got off midnight, so bear with me here. All good. I know the feeling. I uh, just finished up midnight last week. So. Oh, okay. What, uh, what do you do for work? Um, so I guess since kind of hockey season ended, I uh, took an eight-week contract at a vegetable frozen food place in Strathroy. Um, since that eight weeks is up, I'm back uh, working at Golf Town. Oh, right on. So yeah. you're you're like from the St. Thomas way, right? Yeah, I kind of out Strathroy, London way. Oh, okay. Yeah, around that area. Okay. Yeah. Right on, man. Um, now I know that you, uh, I know you, I know you got to work at 11, so I'll try not to make it like over an hour or anything. So you have time to get to work and everything. Oh, um, good. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, yeah. How, how are you, uh, managing everything with the quarantine? I mean, like, I guess for me, it's not really that big of a struggle. I mean, like just having those constant jobs, I've been able to kind of keep busy, um, same thing with like my entire family. Like we've all just been kind of working, um, going about our day. Like we're hanging out at night and whatever. Um, so, I mean, I guess it's not really that much different. Just kind of getting what we need to do done, spending some time together. And uh, yeah, it's different, but it's uh, going to be what we're dealing with for the next little bit. So we're just kind of learning to manage. Yeah, exactly, man. I mean, you know. You know, I know that some people are struggling more than others, especially the people that still can't work. I know that, you know, Ontario is opening up, but, uh, you know, I mean, we're not going to have the, we're not going to have any normal until vaccine comes out. So, yeah. you know, you know, if, it, if we're talking about hockey here, you know, if you, if you're playing or anybody else is playing, I mean, you're more likely not going to be playing with the crowd. So, yeah, uh, yeah that sucks. I know a couple of guys I was, do a uh, podcast with a, uh, they were mentioning that, um, that, you know, if they do play next season, it's going to be so weird having the crowd. So I think it's kind of the same, same answer with everyone. So. Yeah. I mean, like you think back to kind of your minor hockey days and you're playing in front of literally just your parents and uh, I mean, family, like you're playing in front of 50 people or whatever, like, and it's just quiet. Like there's no music or anything like I feel like it would be weird. I think a lot of the NHL guys are talking about like how weird it's going to be going out for warm ups, and there's literally no one there. Um, I think it's, I want to play hockey. Like I don't care if I'm playing in front of fans or not. Like I just want to be out on the ice um, with the boys, obviously enjoying a good time. Um, right. Whether that's with fans or not, I think we need to really take a look at what's safe and really just do whatever's the safest at this point. Yeah, no, that's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's great. Um, you know, it's, uh, I think, you know, if you have a passion for hockey, you're going to want to play no matter what. And that's, that's exactly the answer that you should be given. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, kind of backtrack into, uh, to your, your time with the Maroons. So yeah. how was the, uh, how was the process with, with the trade from Welland to Chatham? Yeah, so um, I was up at Brock University um, to start the year last year. Okay. Um, so I made well and team out of their main camp, kind of started my year there. Um, thought I had a good, solid start to the year. Um, and basically three weeks in, I decided, you know what, um, just looking at my program, is this really something that I want to be doing for the rest of my life? Um, okay. Basically, it came to it, and I was like, you know what, like I think I'm just better off kind of taking the year um, – just being at home, kind of surrounded by um, the people I love, the people I care about. Um, so I said, you know what, like, I think I'm just going to come home for the year. Um, but realizing that, obviously, driving back and forth to Welland um, isn't going to work out. So I kind of started to look at a few teams. Um, I skated with Komoko once or twice. They told me, though, like, if you have any other offers, um, take it. So I remember like I was just getting frustrated. So I was in source for sports one day um, on a Monday, just picking something up and driving around London, like looking at the GOJHL scoreboard. I was like, huh, um, Chatham's kind of having some issues um, keeping the pocket of the net. So um, I've had a good solid relationship with obviously the coach at the time, Kyle McCarrick. Um, so I reached out to him. I'm like, Hey man, like, 
what are you guys up to? He's like, nothing. Like we need a goalie. I'm like, perfect. Um, and basically within 30 minutes or so, um, we had a deal done for me to be in Chatham. Oh, wow. So like, you're like the, the savior then for yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. Cause I, I know, um, kind of just speaking among like the fan base, uh, just cause you know, obviously I run the, uh, all the social media and do the picture right. for you guys. Um, I've had people ask me like almost like I knew everything when really <laughs> I just, I just, I just post the score and I post some things that I've been told by, um, by the coach at the time. Um, yeah. and they're like, you know, what the hell's with all these, what's with all these goalies and, <laughs> and they're going through goalies like, like, like it's crazy. And I said, yeah. yeah, um, you know, I don't really have much to say, but I heard this Kevin Linker guys coming in. So, you know, you know, hopefully I, I've seen that, he, you know, he's a pretty, pretty decent goalie. So hopefully, you know, yeah. that will help things out a little bit. Um, yeah. So I know that when I was talking to, um, uh, when I was talking to Wally, he, uh, he was kind of mentioning about the whole process that they were having in London where um, they were having like, so, he, you know, he got traded to Chatham. And then after when you guys both came in at the same time, then you had um, a couple other guys coming in and, and he was talking yeah. about how, like, he was worried, like, Oh, like, you know, is this gonna, you know, what's happening here? Are they trying to get like, you know, like he wasn't totally sure what was going to happen, but luckily it kind of worked out in the end with you too. So. Yeah. And I mean, like Wally was a great partner to work with. Um, probably one of my favorite goalie partners that I've ever had. Um, just the energy the kid brings to the rink um, on an everyday level. And then just like even outside the rink, like I know we would go get food after practices and stuff together. Um, and just like even throughout quarantine, even, even though we're both back at home, we still talk um, basically on a daily basis. Right on. Yeah, because he was mentioning about um, – I had to ask him about the, uh, you know, kind of like the like victory dance that you guys uh, do after the game and the story behind that. And Yeah. It, it looks like you guys really had a good – a really good rapport on the, on the ice for sure. Yeah, definitely <clears throat> got along in the room. That's one of the things you kind of worry about. Like, is my goalie partner going to be some, like, absolute weirdo? Like, I don't know, but, like – we're both chill. Like we both just take it easy. We're not too like high strung or anything. So that just made it really easy for the two of us to get along. Right on, man. Um, uh, like in previous teams that you, that you've been on, have you ever had any like bad experiences with anybody or. I don't think I really had any bad experiences. I mean, looking back on it, I've had goalie partners that I wasn't a fan of. Um, just I don't know. Some kids have this level of arrogance to them. Um, and I mean, like, if you're going to talk that way, like you better back it up with your play. And if you're not backing up it up with your play. Um, yeah. I mean, last year I had my goalie partner literally said to me, um, I played on a weaker team in junior C last year. He's like, how does it feel starting a game when you know you're going to get pulled? I'm like, come on, man. Like, yeah. you can't be saying that stuff to me before a start. You know, it's it's one thing, you know, if you got the other goalie from another team and, you know, just doing a little bit of fun trash talk and no harm done. But when it's someone on your, your own team, it's like, shut your mouth, you know, like, it's yeah, like, come like, on. Just... like, even if, even if that's what they're thinking, your job is to help each other out and help that mental aspect to, to prepare your teammate for, for the game, right? Like, yeah, support me here. Don't just tell me, oh yeah, you're probably going to get pulled tonight. Uh, I'm ready to go in when you're not like. Yeah, it's like, gee, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, um, you know, it's kind of like you get a lot of people like that who are just not humble. And um, uh, there's a guy that uh, that goes to the same gym I do here in Chatham. And uh, and he was telling me he knew uh, Taylor Hall. Obviously, I'm sure you know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he was telling me, like, this guy, like, before he got drafted, um, when he was with the Spitfires, like, this guy was talking, like – you know, oh, I can get, you know, they're in a bar and he's like, oh, I can get any girl here I, here I want. I'm like the hot shot on the Spitfires. And, and then you see him and he goes into the NHL and the guy's got traded like to like two or three other teams, like yeah. in, in a short time span. So, you know, sometimes that kind of attitude sometimes can work not so much in your favor. So, you know, if you want to talk that kind of way, you got to back it up. Like you yeah. Said. But, um, 
Yeah. So um, I asked Wally about his helmet, um, but having like the whole Spider-Man helmet. So he told me a story about that, about that helmet, but about yours. So I, yours, like uh, you kind of have a couple of designs on there. So what was, did you, did you want that design on your helmet or how'd that, how'd that work? Yeah. So I've actually got a really close friend um, from back home. Um, we've been friends basically since we were born. Um, she's a really gifted artist. So the last few times I've had my mask done, I think I've gotten it done um, three times. So once each year that I've played junior and basically each time I get it done, we basically go over, we, we say like, look like, what do we want to kind of do with this one? Um, so just a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, I know just look, give me a sec to look at a picture of it but like we just sit down at like her dining room table or whatever we kind of brainstorm we're like all right like how, what direction do we want to go in this so obviously um on the one side you know i want to incorporate some of what chatham is um so you guys have that capital theater downtown so that's kind of um, on the one side of the helmet yeah and then obviously the maroons logo on the top um and then with the 60th anniversary um this year i figured it would be big to incorporate that logo so that's kind of what we got on the other side so yeah i know that's pretty cool i think um i think that um anyone that's played goalie for chatham has had really cool helmet designs um yeah you guys have an awesome guy to work there with um with rpm designs yeah you can give him anything and he's gonna do an amazing job with it Uh, definitely gonna be going back to him to get my next mask done Right. Um, I was going to have this question later, but so you say you're going to get your helmet done again with him. So are you, are you returning next season? Are you looking at another team? Yeah. So basically um, I had a conversation with Roz, I guess probably about a month ago now. Um, So I'm going to Western university next year in London. Um, Okay. So I basically just sat down and talked with him. Um, He was really good about it. I basically just said like, look, if I'm, if I'm going to be going to Western next year, um, like, I don't think it's in my best interest to be in a day, like driving from my place into London to go to school for four four hours and then having to bust my butt to Chatham, um, whether that's to get on a bus to go to LaSalle or Leamington. He said, yeah, like for sure. Like, what do you want to do? And basically um, I think at this point we're just working on kind of getting me moved somewhere closer to home. Um, I don't really know where that's going to be at this point but yeah that's kind of where we're at for this this point okay do you think that uh do you think that rosler might possibly possibly like if you're looking to move back closer home like maybe make a trade with uh like with strathroy or st thomas something like that yeah um basically like i've kind of just been letting um tyler handle it um i trust him um i've kind of got a few ideas of where I'd like to go. Um, I know St. Thomas could use some goaltending help. And I mean, I played there before last year as a, as an 18 year old. So um, it's a good organization. Um, I like the way things are run there. So hopefully um, we can get something done there. But I mean, talking about Strathroy, right? like you always talk about wanting to go play kind of where you grew up, play in front of the team you grew up watching. So I mean, like, if I end up in Strathroy like that, obviously be super cool. And I'm really close friends with the, their other goalie there, uh, Josh Diamond. So, I mean, basically whatever Ross can get done so I can play hockey with or play hockey next year, like I'm just going to be happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, uh, it's good. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's nice to see that, you know, your coaches, cause you know, you have, I, I know I've heard about, I'm not, not so much locally here, but I've heard about other, um, coaches or administrative staff who um, tend to try to keep their players or they'll try to like beat around the bush to keep, you know, like they'll, they don't, they won't so much work with the players. Like either they won't trade you, like they'll either just not trade you and they'll just uh, let you leave the team. Um, yeah. But at least with Rosler, you know, he, you know, he's looking, okay, like I, I hear what you're saying. I'll try to, I'll try to work with it and see what I can do, which is great. And that's what a coach should do. Um, so, you know, hopefully we'll see, we'll see what happens. And, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, like Roz knows how I feel about playing in Chatham last year. Like that's Chatham's probably the best junior environment I've ever played in. I mean, getting to play in front of those fans every night, like, 
it's just absolutely awesome. Um, the passion they bring to the rink, the way they want the team to win. Um, like it's so cool to see it's something you don't really see um, kind of in this junior B level, but just the energy. Um, I mean, when we're going like that barn's rocking, <laughs> just the coolest thing. Um, so, I mean, looking back, like I absolutely love my time in Chatham. Like if I could make it work, like I would love to make it work, but just thinking like for myself, for my mental health, like just having to be driving like four hours a day, like just got to think about it and be like, you know, is this really going to work? Like, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, you look at like, um, you look at the, the twins on the team. I don't, I don't know how they drove from London every day. I don't, I don't know how they could do it, but you know. Yeah. We actually, uh, we had a carpool set up. So there was, um, oh, okay. I guess at the end of the, the end of the year, we had, um, myself, Macaulay, um, the Fishers and then Zach Power were all kind of from that same area. So oh, yeah. little, little group chat going on and we just kind of, all right, boys, who's driving today? And we just made sure like, cause yeah, it does get tiring, like having to drive back and forth every day on your own. So we just keep it fun. Like we'll, we'll blare tunes or whatever on the way there and just, um, enjoy each other's company. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah. I'd like, I know a couple of the guys, um, you know, from like more Windsor way, they, they all kind of travel together. So it's nice to see the guys that, you know, not everyone's going to, not everyone that's playing for the team is going to be from Chatham. So it's nice to kind of see the guys able to work together. And, and I think that, uh, I think that does help with, I guess, building that, uh, that chemistry and rapport as yeah. well. So, yeah, I mean, that, that's great to hear. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, whoever's going to be on the team next year, whoever they sign and, and, uh, you know, whoever uh, likes the team for next season, hopefully they can keep that up because that, that does go far um, yeah. in terms of building that relationship with the guys on the team. And I mean, like, I think looking back on it, like our room this year was really tight. Um, like you could talk to anyone about anything. Um, like we would go out for team dinners, whether it be after a practice or a game or something, especially towards the end of the year. Um, just go out. Like I remember – the Saturday before game six um, in LaSalle, we had a practice on the Friday and we just went out after practice, um, just went to Boston pizza, grabbed some food, um, just enjoyed our time together. Cause you know, we know that at any point, like even with this coronavirus thing, like our hockey season could have been shut down at any point. So we just wanted to enjoy the time we had together and uh, yeah, just a second family. Oh, 100% man. Um, yeah. So kind of going back to your helmet. So, um, with hockey, with like the goalie gear. So did you have to pay for the helmet and your pads or does that get paid for by the organization? Yeah. So basically, um, I know when Kyle was the head coach, like he would pay for the goalies to get their helmets done. Um, I had to pay to get mine done just because I got it done after, um, Mac left the organization. But the good thing about RPM is just, he works like locally he does a lot of stuff with the team so he was able to get hook me up with a really solid price for that um and then pads wise um my pads are actually white and red i'm not sure if anyone in chatham knows that um but my pads are white and red i just um there's a product called pad skins um basically you buy it and you can just buy whatever color so obviously black and maroon you stick it on there and you can make whatever design you want with it Okay. Well, I got to ask about that because your pads and I was like, literally, I think the pads that you had were the same kind of design color, everything that, uh, I think the goal we had last year, Tristan yeah. Lewis, I think he had this almost the exact same designs. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, is that just a coincidence or did they like pass on the pads or, you know, it's like passing on the torch almost. I don't know. Yeah, no. So uh, Louie actually had the same thing I did. He, uh, his pads were all white. I remember at the start of uh, training camp last year, his gear was all white. And then I show up in the regular season playing against uh, Chatham and he's got all the moon and black gear. I'm like, yeah, that's pad skins. So I've been using pad skins for, I guess, probably four years now, um, whether it was just all white gear that I wanted to add some splash to. Um, but it's just a fun, fun product to work with because you can literally do whatever you want with your gear and kind of just make it your own makes it look custom without having to shell out the 
three thousand dollars for the custom gear that you want yeah and and yeah like uh it's crazy i mean i know in the nhl the guys get that stuff paid for i'm i'm pretty sure i mean even the guys like um if you look at um you know if you look at even the top guys are getting paid like 10 11 million dollars if we're talking about like especially like toronto maple leafs i mean those guys are making really really big bucks yeah. even if they had to pay for the gear that's like nothing just to come out of their account so you so know like you know, yeah you're able to buy six or seven sets of gear if you're going to go through that much gear if you want in a year <laughs> yeah exactly but uh you know i think it's not a bad thing to buy buy your own gear because then guys are not uh so tempted to like break sticks or you know uh you know whatever they they take more care of their their equipment like i know uh what 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 year was i think it was like two years ago and we were playing um either i think it was lasalle or leamton and the goalie just had like the goalie from the other team freaked out like we're whooping their ass and and uh the goalie just had massive breakdown took the stick and just whacked against the the post and snapped in half and he got kicked out of the game and uh yeah like it's like you know that just kind of tells me that either a he's not very bright or the, you know, like the guys just, you know, they paid for his stick, so he doesn't care. Like, I yeah. And like some teams will straight up say to you, like, we'll pay for your sticks or whatever. But like, if you do something stupid with it, like if you're breaking it over a crossbar or anything just to get a new one, like that's it. Like we don't need to be paying for that. So basically take care of your gear and we'll take care of you or you can buy your own stuff. Well, exactly. So, um, yeah, so have, have like what has been like your favorite and not so favorite moment of the season? I mean, I guess we start with the not so favorite moment. Um, okay. <laughs> I guess losing to LaSalle in game seven. Uh, you know, obviously that's tough looking back on it. Um, you know, being up 3 1 in that series and then it kind of just shifted and LaSalle really kind of just locked it down. I think we scored like four goals in the last three games there. Um, Mm -hmm. so obviously just, it's frustrating. Like you're up three, one, you kind of think you've got a strangle hold on the series. Um, but at the end of the day, like, what can you do really? Um, I mean, as far as favorite moments, like just anytime we would be like one of the top teams, like I know we beat both, uh, St. Mary's and Leamington at home and both those nights, like when we were playing well, um, the barn was just absolutely rocking and, uh, just an absolutely exciting atmosphere to play in. Just kind of knowing those fans like absolutely have your back no matter what. Um, just so cool to see. Right. Yeah. Well, if you want to talk about fans, like obviously I'm sure you know, but the like, especially when you play on the one side of the of the ice at home, um, the guys are like sitting behind the the net there, uh, just <laughs> yelling, carrying on all night. I mean, I'm sure that really does fuel your uh, fuel the game for sure. Yeah, I remember, uh, I guess it would have been last year when I was in St. Thomas, we were in Chatham on a Sunday night, and uh, we had this American defenseman, and he uh, kind of had a temper. Uh, He was a little bit harder going, so he took a few penalties, and the fans just got on him, and it was just, I mean, as much as I'm playing with the kid, like, it's just absolutely hilarious to see. Like, you got kids running down to the penalty box, just banging on the glass, like, yeah, no, um, I can remember it. Now you're talking about, pen, uh, like, hitting the glass on the penalty box. I remember, uh, I, 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 was it, I think it might have been Bryce that I was talking to about this, but it was, like, three years ago, and they were, we, we were playing LaSalle, and it was the same kind of, like, it was a huge rivalry. And, uh, and I think it was, um, oh, I, it was a guy named Noah Bushnell who was on the Maroons the one year. And yeah. I don't know him. He just, he was just going at it with this other guy, um, you know, just like all, like all season long. And it just started really fueling in the playoffs. Well, this guy, he, uh, he checked him in the head from behind and didn't get kicked out of the game. And it was so unnecessary. Like, like the guy, the one guy gave uh, one of the players on La Salle, like a really clean, nice hit. And he, and he finished the check and there was nothing wrong with it, but they stopped the play because the kid was hurt. And the guy just came up and and cross checked him in the head from behind and didn't get kicked out of the game. So he got thrown in the box. And a couple of these guys, a couple of these fans, 
uh, it just came over and just pounded the glass. I mean, they hit the glass so hard that it, you could literally see it bend. It was like literally <laughs> bending over. I'm like, geez, man, like relax. The kid's like six, like 17, 18 years old. Like, and you're yeah. like, you're like a 30 year old man freaking out. It's like, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to have a Ty Domi situation where in like in Toronto, where he uh, sprayed the one fan with the water bottle and the fan ended up in the penalty box. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I remember that too. I mean, I don't know. Like, I guess like at the end of the day, you know, um, it's just better just leave the guys alone. They're in the box. They're already upset. Like, you know, these guys are in their junior career, like just leave them alone. I don't know. Yeah. But I guess it's a whole idea about, you know, it's our barn, you know, like let's get, you know, get under their skin. So I get that. So, yeah. But um, do you, when you were mentioning about being beaten game seven, do you kind of find it's a bit bittersweet that, um, that, you know, even though that you got beat and if, you know, that if factor, if you had won, that you wouldn't have been really playing much longer. I mean, like, obviously it's the playoffs. Like you want to win. Um, but I mean, looking back on it, LaSalle played what one game in the second round versus London. Yeah, so. yeah I think so. Yeah. I mean, like, you look back on it, and you're like, yeah. You play one extra game. You play against London in their barn. Like, that's always a tough tough rink to go into, just mm -hmm. the bigger ice. Um, I mean, obviously, you want to win. You want to get that first-round playoff um, win, obviously. Um, but, I mean, looking back, seeing well, LaSalle didn't get much more out of it. I mean, it's a bit of a consolation, but at the end of the day, like, you still want to win. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, 100%. Um, did you did you know that you were going to get the starting position for the playoffs? Like, I know, I think it was game one that you didn't play starting, but... Yeah, so um, Wally started in games one and two, and then kind of after the first period in game two, I kind of came in, and uh, the net was just mine from there. Um, we didn't really have any clue like what way um, Roz was kind of thinking about it. Like we kind of shuffled back and forth all year. Um, and I mean, like, that's fine. Like I don't mind sharing the net, like, especially if one of us gets hot. I remember there was a stretch kind of in February where Walt was playing just absolutely unreal. Mm -hmm. like, just absolute treat to watch him when he's kind of dialed in like that. Um, so basically I just went into the mindset with the playoffs, like, you know, like it's the playoffs, like we got to do whatever's best for the team. If that means like I'm going to be the biggest cheerleader on the bench, like then so be it. Um, if I'm going to get to play, obviously I'm going to go in there, um, give my absolute 110% and just kind of hope that we can pull off some victories here. Well, man, I got to say like you were incredible in the playoffs. Like there was some, there was a couple, uh, there was a couple of plays that you made where I was like, oh, shit. You know, like, you know, like, I was like, oh, is he going to get it? Like, it was, it was pretty incredible to see what you did. And, um, you know, there was a couple times where I felt really bad for you because there were people like harping like, oh, guys, help him out, help him out. And, uh, and it's like, well, you know, there's only so much that the defenseman can do. And it's only so much the goalie can do. And, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, like, I, I think, I guess, people don't really understand what's going on in the game. Like people are always harping on the defense and, and uh, sometimes like I heard things like, Oh, Linker, come on, man. You could have got that one. And it's like, but you don't really understand what's going on. Yeah. You're not playing in that. Um, like there's shots where I think there was a couple where like you're literally on this side and the guy's blocking you and there's nothing you can do to get to the other side. And yeah. I don't know, there was a couple interference plays I remember in, that that didn't get called and i'm thinking like what are the refs seeing out there so yeah like i mean looking back on kind of the refs that we had like kind of throughout that entire series you know kind of anytime you're getting into that leamington lasalle kind of way um i mean like there's going to be some toss-ups but i mean like at the end of the day it's the same thing as us like they're just out there doing their best like they're not getting paid the big bucks either so you got to understand that they're, even though there is four of them on the ice, like they're going to make mistakes. Um, it's, I mean, it's part of junior hockey, like nobody's perfect. Um, so I guess just that refing kind of, the unpredictable of it's 
unpredictableness of it kind of just adds a little bit more excitement to the game. Yo, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, yeah, like you said, you said it best. No one's perfect. Um, do you have any like pregame traditions? I mean, like, I don't really have any traditions. Like, I think on a game day, like, my routine is kind of set. Like, I'll take a shower kind of before I – at home before I put my suit on, um, put my suit on, drive to the rink. Um, generally, I'll grab a nice coffee um, on the way to the rink. Just kind of gives me that little extra boost. Um, but as far as, like, pregame meal, it always stays the same. And then once I get to the rink, like, my routine is pretty set in stone. I'll show up. Um, kind of get my shorts and um, sweater and stuff on, just kind of tape my sticks um, and then go out, do some hand bag coordination stuff, just kind of get my eyes focused, get dialed in. Um, occasionally, like I'll throw a bit of meditation in there. But after that, like just some sewer ball with the boys um, and then just get a good stretch in, um, do a little bit more hand eye, just really get dialed in. And then, yeah, after warm ups, like it's just all 100% go. Right on. Um, is there anything when you're as a goalie, when you're on the ice, is there any part of the game that you don't like, whether that be like a penalty shot or a breakaway or angles or. I mean, like I never have really been a fan of seeing a guy coming down on me one on O. Um, <laughs> I don't think any goalie can really say, Oh yeah, I just absolutely love that. Um, so, I mean, like obviously breakaways, but like, Honestly, for me, um, as much as it's going to sound weird to say, like, I'm really not a fan of, like, when a game gets really physical. Um, I know earlier in my career that was something that I was kind of timid about. I mean, looking back on a LaSalle game, I know you can go back and see video of me just right in there, um, kind of pulling guys out of the scrum. Yeah. But, um, I mean, just I'm not a physical guy. Like, I'm a goalie. I'm not going to be out there laying a big hit or throwing, throwing the next big punch. Um, so I guess like that physical aspect, but I mean, looking goaltending wise, um, yeah, never, never really a fan of seeing a guy come down on me one on out. Well, and, and I mean, I think that's, I think that would be the answer for most people. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, I've talked to uh, um, a guy that I know he used to play goalie a long time ago, but uh, he was mentioning me and he's like, no, I, I love breakaways because it was like that rush. Either I know that I'm going to save it. I'm not going to save it. But if I do, you know, that's the big reward, you know, it's like, wow, like I got it. Um, but I don't know. But then at the same time, he loved that, but he hated, he hated slap shots from when they were, when they would be like, when there would be screens. Um, yeah. like he hated that because a lot of times, like as much as he had the equipment on, he hated, he hated not knowing where the puck was going. And he said like that, like he hated when that happened. And unfortunately the team that he was on, they, uh, they they weren't the best at uh, clearing clearing the way. So you know, for him, I guess that's you know you would think that you would prefer that over a penalty shot, but uh, or not penalty shot, but like a breakaway. But yeah. that wasn't the case for him. So I guess everybody's a little bit different. But yeah, everyone's got kind of like their preferences. Um, some people are going to shine in a breakaway situation. Uh, I'm probably not one of those people. <laughs> but. Yeah, like, looking, as, like you said, like, looking through screens and stuff, like, I know I've got the equipment on, like, as long as I'm able to kind of get my head out of the way, um, kind of see where that puck is going, like, I've generally got a pretty good idea of where that puck's going to end up, hopefully. Yeah, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, do you have any, like, funny moments on or off the ice with any of your teammates? Off. I mean, like, just the entire year was – kind of a riot you know um our 16 year old this year um Blake Boudreaux just funny kid like just some of the things he pulls like off the ice um whether it's just a simple text in the group chat like after we're just talking about something he's like wait when's practice or whatever um he just always kept things loose um I sat close to him in the in the locker room so some just some of the things he does you make you go Blake like come on man um but I mean, like, I guess funny moments, like just practices, like we would do, um, we would do shootouts at the end. And uh, basically the last guy to score um, had to take a bite out of either a lemon or a lime, whatever Roz had with him that day. So, I mean, like just 
watching that guy t- kind of take a bite out of that lemon or something like just the look of disgust on his face just always always brings a good chuckle to the boys yeah i know and i guess that's kind of like it's part of the i guess the fun you know it, it's kind of like a motivator to like make sure you get you know you score but you know at the end of the day it's like it's all fun right so yeah and it, and it's good it keeps the guys you know together and uh you know has a bit of that um yeah it just adds more to that uh the fuel and for the next game and just keeps everyone together. So exactly. Um, yeah. So you being a goalie, I know like goalies can be susceptible to uh, injuries and stuff. Have you ever been injured before? Yeah. So um, I've had, I think to this point, two concussions. Um, I've been looked at for a few others. I think my first concussion kind of went undiagnosed just because it happened, I guess, probably five or six years ago when we really didn't have all that research. But at the same time, like, I knew I was having headaches every day, but I also knew we were in the middle of a playoff run and our other goalie was hurt too. So I was like, I'm not coming in here and letting an AP, like, um, kind of give up our fate in the playoffs. So you kind of just battle through that. Um, my mom would kill me. I mean, she wants to kill me because I have told her about it once or twice. And then I guess in my first year junior, I got a concussion, just kind of a fluky thing. Um, I think we were playing with three minutes left in a game and just, I just kind of literally got bumped and like just the whiplash kind of my head going back. Um, Like it didn't really set in right away. Like I didn't really notice any symptoms until 30 minutes after. Um, Like I was just nauseous on the ride home from the game. Um, I got home sensitivity to the light and everything headaches and stuff so my mom took me into the hospital um got checked out and then concussion um and then even um I don't know if you remember or if you were at the game in Leamington um I guess it would have been the day before the trade deadline but I left that game after the second period um with three minutes left I kind of took basically a slap shot from the top of the circle right off the mask um and I mean like I felt fine at first was just coming off the ice after the second period like just I knew my head wasn't in a good place I said you know what like I think I gotta go get this checked out so I went and got it checked out Um, obviously got cleared didn't miss any time um, thankfully and then just kind of at the end of this year um, I was playing through kind of just something to do with my hip flexor Um, I was supposed to have physio on it after the season was over and then obviously all the COVID stuff happened so I never really got into see um, the physiotherapist I was supposed to but um, it seems to be healing up fine like I'm not having any issues with any of my online or off ice training or anything so um, hopefully it doesn't flare up again but yeah just kind of a few few of the injuries I've dealt with along the way it's all part of hockey and being a goalie you know yeah yeah but you're like everything else is kind of healing up your head's fine and yeah yeah my head's fine um I basically said to myself, like, if I get one more concussion, like, that's probably going to be it for me just because, I mean, I do have high hopes with my schooling and stuff. And obviously, like, growing up, like, I realized hockey's not going to be everything for me. Um, It's not the end game. I'm going to need to sell a job to support my family and whatever. So basically, probably one more concussion for me. And that's probably going to be it. Yeah. I mean, you got to take care of yourself. And, um, you know, I mean, it's not – sports is not worth, you know, a long-term uh, mental injury. Um, exactly. You know, like there's a lot of guys that take the risks and they just keep going because they, their love for the sport, whatever, whatever sport that they're in, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, some guys, they just keep pushing through and then they get that end result of having a long-term injury, which is never good. Um, and, yeah. and then it affects other parts of their life. So you mentioning about, you know, getting your schooling in, you know, yeah, that's a smart move, you know. Um, Yeah. Do you, um, now talking on that subject, uh, do you have any plans on what you want to go to school for? Yeah. So like I said, I'm going to be going to Western. Uh, I'm going to be studying under social sciences, um, hopefully majoring in uh, criminology. And hopefully I'm either going to minor or combine that into a double major with political sciences. And then after that, um, I haven't really decided. I've kind of thought about the idea of going to law school. Um, Oh, okay. So 
that's kind of something. Um, law is kind of something that's always interested me. I uh, luckily had a great law teacher when I was in high school. He really kind of got me engaged in it. So we had some mock trial competitions that I was able to go prepare for and then compete in. And I really just enjoyed that entire process. So that's kind of something um, that's kind of, I've got an idea of what I could do with it after. Um, otherwise, just like probation officer, even with the political sciences, like I could go into politics if I wanted to, hopefully. Right on. Yeah, I mean, that's good, man. I mean, um, you know, some people, their path is get the NHL, some OHL, or just they just want to get the highest that they can go. But uh, it's good to hear that, you know, you you know, you know have that school that you want to fall back on. And uh, that's great to hear, man. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess kind of going back into uh, – into the game um as a goalie when when you're being screened or when you're being blocked from your opponent have you ever had any like trash talking against you or are you against them i mean like you're always kind of at that person i remember um just playing teammate or playing against like friends and stuff guys i've grown up with um you know you never want want to get in their skin too much but let's say i'm playing against lasalle or leamington like if I don't know you, like, I've got no issues, like, giving you a blocker in the back a few times, pop my stick up kind of in your uh, genital area, you know, to kind of make sure you know I'm there and I'm not going to let you kind of walk in and kind of take my crease. So that's my crease. Stay out of it. And I mean, obviously, I don't want to ever hurt someone, but just making sure that I, uh, I'm still putting myself in the best spot to make the save that I need to make, right? Right. Do you – how do you feel about, like, guys hitting the pad like do you like do you have some guys that just do it just uh you know just for fun or like if you know who they are do you really take it personal if i know who it is like if i know it's my buddy or whatever like i'm not going to take it too personally um if i don't know you like if i've got crevier from la salle or something like come and taking a swing at my pad or whatever like obviously i'm going to stand up and um take offense to it but like if you're one of my buddies i know like you're just doing it just to try and get me get me going, get in my head a little bit. So I'm not going to take it that personally. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and an, another thing, I just thought of this now. So I, it's not just you that I've seen doing it, but I've seen other goalies do it. So what's the whole idea about you take a drink of water and you, and you like spray it all over the ice. What's that all about? Like you, you'll spray it behind the, the net there. Yeah. So that's kind of like, I use that just as a mental reset kind of thing. Um, basically I'll just take a drink, make sure that I'm staying hydrated and whatever. And then I'll just pluck it up and basically um, the goal is just to find the last kind of droplet and just track that down um, to the ice. Just kind of focuses your mindset, keeps you, keeps your eyes alert um, and obviously just helps reset your brain. And I mean, like at the same time, it's fun, like just trying to stay loose and whatever. So yeah, that's kind of just the whole story behind it. I actually, I picked it up from a goalie partner of mine back from my first year junior he did it and I was like what on earth is this guy doing and then I noticed like I heard an NHL goalie talking about it I guess a year later and I was like oh, maybe there's actually something uh in it so I kind of just picked it up this year and just I find it helps me stay loose and yeah right on right on yeah it's like watching you do like I kind of had an idea what you're doing I'm like this guy can't possibly just be doing it just because he's <laughs> I think he's just bored um just wasting so, water up here, Luke. Just out here wasting water. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so now, now you explain it. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. But yeah. uh, is, there anything that you, is there anything that you would change with your time with the Maroons? No, I don't think so. Like, honestly, I think I really enjoyed, like, basically all, the entire time I got here. Um, you know, looking back, obviously there's games you want to have back or whatever whatever there's games that you wish never happened i remember london thrashed us a few times um obviously you know that's never fun but looking back on it you look back and you're like really like is there anything i could have done here um and at the end of the day like i just yeah but yeah no, i mean that would change about chatham 100 percent. and i know you you talked about your love for playing for chatham and playing in chatham with the atmosphere and everything so yeah if you have nothing to change then there you go right you know exactly um yeah so kind of just going off topic here but uh yeah so do you have any like nhl idols that you that you try to um like ma like 
I guess that influence your, your style of play? Not really. Like I know everyone kind of says, well, I look up to this guy or I look up to this guy. Um, for me, like I just, I enjoy watching everyone play. Like everyone kind of brings um, a different thing to the table. Like I know looking at Andre Vasilevsky in Tampa, like mm-hmm. he's always so much fun to watch. Like just the ap- acrobatic stuff he can pull off um, at any given point always makes him to, a treat to watch. Um, but I mean, like I was able to see, I guess last May I went down to New York and I got to see um, Alexander Gorgiev and uh, Sergei Bobrovsky, two other Russians kind of go at it. And that's, that's a fun battle. I mean, we know um, Bobrovsky, like he's one of the top goalies in the year league in league out. So he's obviously a treat to watch. Um, but I mean, like funniest goalie, like Ilya Brisgalov, like he's always so much fun, like whether it's his post game interview or whatever. Um, like I know he's not playing anymore, but like he's just so much fun to watch. Oh, right on, man. Um, do you have like a favorite team? Yeah, uh, I'm a big Leafs fan. Uh, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. Like everyone's talking about like Detroit and some other teams. I'm like, come on, like where's the love for Toronto? Yeah, no, um, lots of love for Toronto here. Actually, over I guess near Christmas, I got to go to my first game in Toronto. Oh, um, right on. Oh. So, me and my at the time girlfriend, um, we went kind of on a whim. It was that Monday game, the Monday afternoon game against Carolina that ended. Oh like, no heck. way! So that was just like so cool to see, just being in the building to watch um, Matthews make that spin around a pass to Marner. Oh. Like, there was that stretch where the Leafs scored three goals in fifty three seconds, and it was just absolutely insane to be there for. Yeah, that was just absolutely filthy. Like, I mean, just how. Like, I actually watched it on TV. So, I – because I went to um, – so, I work for Community Living. So, one of my uh, – one of the guys I support, um, I took him – or no, not – sorry, not one of my guys. But I – so, um, within Community Living, there's this uh, program where you can work with people individually. And yeah. I was asked to take uh, a couple guys to uh, do a Toronto Maple Leafs game. I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah, okay. Yeah. And um, – and I think it was a game they're playing against Ottawa where it was just both teams just weren't bringing the heat. <laughs> and uh, I think it was the one where Spezza and I think it was Spezza that got the one goal. And I'm not sure if there was, it was, yeah, I think it was, yeah, it was one to one. And then I think oh, it was, was Marner. It that overtime game? Yeah, it was mm-hmm. that overtime game where Marner got the, got the overtime goal. And that was pretty yeah. sweet. But I think that. I wish I went to that afternoon game with Carolina because that was – like, that game was just insane. I was like, oh, my God, this is awesome. And uh, and then as soon as Marner got that goal, I'm like, Jesus. Like, that was just – that was a game to go see. So Yeah, like, it wasn't even anything, like, we had prepared for. Like, we kind of just woke up on the Wednesday – or on the Monday morning. And we're like, what are we doing today? So, like, I just looked at Ticketmaster. Like, I saw a pair of tickets cheap. I'm like – can you be ready in like 30 minutes? Like we're going to go to the Leafs game. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, okay. Be ready. So kind of just flew down to Toronto and made it there. Just actually, we were just getting into our seats because the Leafs scored like a minute 30 into that game. Oh, okay. just getting in our seats for that. So that was probably the best NHL game. Like I'll ever see. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I definitely like the atmosphere in Toronto. They have like they just have such a great fan base. I mean, being yeah. one of the original, one of the original teams in the NHL. I mean, they're just it's insane. It's insane atmosphere. I know they have a lot of like there's a lot of smack talk about Toronto and their defense, and they got to fix this, they got to fix that. But I don't care what who you are. I think it's like their atmosphere is, is unbelievable when they score and they got the music and they got everyone up and moving. It's, it's great. Um, and talking about NHL, um, did you hear about the comeback that they're, that they're making? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of just been reading about it. Um, just in the last day or so since they released it. Um, I like the least chances against Columbus. I mean, yeah, after that, whether they go, bracket style or seating style. I mean, obviously if the Leafs don't have to play Boston, <laughs> Uh, the further we can kind of push that off, the better. But like I said, um, if that first round is going to be a best of five, the Leafs can't lose in game seven and break my heart again if there is no game seven. So, <laughs> Yeah. Well, I don't know if you heard um, 
when the COVID came and they were postponing the season, someone put a uh, made a meme and it says, uh, "It's like, well, you can't you can't get beat by Boston Game Seven if there's no NHL." So <laughs> exactly. So I'm I'm kind of glad that they're not playing Boston because if they lost again, it would just be the same story, and it really does. Um, I think it has an impact on the on the Leafs organization for yeah. sure because it's like how do we who do we blame this on do we blame it on uh do we blame it on the coach do we blame it on the gm do we just blame it on the players themselves like where would we put the blame on so i think it will be a nice fresh start playing against yeah. uh against columbus because they are a team that Tor- toronto's proven that they can they can beat them and not just beat them but they can dominate um, yeah i mean but, looking at their forwards they've got probably three of the best forwards in the nhl with uh Marner, Matthews, and Tavares, like those three can just dominate the game. And everyone says, well, defense wins championships and playoffs. Well, when your top six looks like that, you can score six goals on any given night. Yeah, 100%. Um, but definitely they, they have to, uh, they definitely have to make some changes for sure. And I think, you know, I think it was a good attempt to get Tyson Berry, but I think the, the problem with that is that he's not a, he's not a defensive defenseman. And I think it worked last year with Riley being with Hainsey because Riley is the kind of guy that will, if you watch how they play, they they'll send their <clears throat> why they're so good defense or offensively because they got their offense in and they usually send at least one uh, defenseman in there to play it mm-hmm. offensively as well. And and Riley being good um, shooting from the point, um, you know that helps. But the problem is they don't have they don't have a lot of defensemen that can stay back and sit at the blue line and wait because the problem is you watch a lot of times and they, and a lot of the teams, what they do is they, they do the exact same thing. They watch and they always have a guy sitting there waiting. And then they, and then, you know, next thing you know, half the guys aren't coming back to help out, which, I mean, we all can agree that, you know, Matthews has needed to work on that. Um, but they'll, they'll have one defenseman and they got two or three guys already, on one guy and it's, and you've seen it like multiple games and it's like, they got to fix something. So yeah. hopefully with, once they get rid of Tyson Berry, um, you know, hopefully they have some of that cap space to get somebody. So I don't yeah. know. Like, I, I don't know. You being a goalie, how do you feel about them acquiring uh, that, that guy from LA? I mean, I like Jack Campbell. I thought he came in and did a lot of um, the right things. Like he was, Freddie was kind of, going through a downfall there on that one point in the year and Campbell was just kind of there to steady the ship. Um, I mean, he played, I've seen some of his best hockey. Like he played some of that with the Leafs um, this year, I thought. Um, So obviously um, he's going to be there for the next little bit with, for the next two or three years. So even as a backup, like I think he's more probably the most competent backup that the Leafs have had probably since McElhaney. So Oh yeah, I mean we don't have to get started on Sparks yeah, or no. Um, even um, uh, who was the last guy that was on there? Uh, I'm trying to think of his name. I can't think Hutchinson. of it. Hutchinson. Hutchinson. Yeah. I don't even think Hutchinson is that bad. I think the problem is just with the team that they have. He's just he's not good enough to play the way Freddie does. Like Freddie, yeah. he's good enough that he can stand on his head every game. Um, Whereas I think with Hutchinson and, and also with Hutchinson, I don't know if it really makes more of a difference, but him having catching with his right hand, I don't know if that makes it harder for him, but yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, but it's, yeah, like you said, it's nice to kind of see they finally have a backup who I think you could rely on if Freddie got hurt. I think you could rely on Campbell to play against even the top guys like Bo- or top teams like Boston and uh, yeah and and uh washington teams like that so um yeah man we'll see right yeah um but uh yeah listen it's uh kind of coming up on time i don't want to keep you too much longer i know you gotta sure. get ready for working you know get out there so um yeah i just want to thank you for coming on here yeah and, no worries uh, thank you for having me thank yeah not not a problem it's been uh it's been a joy having you on here and uh i yeah. hope we uh I hope nothing but the best for you and um, good luck with your, with your upcoming season, whatever choice you make. And uh, we'll see you soon.
Awesome. Thanks, Luke. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, man.